Highcroft. A home, a tradition, an era. The children of Frank T. Heffelfinger and Lucia Peavy remember Highcroft as the place where they grew up. We think of Highcroft as a magical castle that lives in our imagination as a symbol of a way of life that few of us will ever experience. For a brief moment, let's bring the memories alive and go back to Highcroft. Facing Lake Minnetonka, Highcroft sits on 152 acres of farmland outside the town of Wyzetta. A hedge-line drive beginning at Ferndale Road leads up to the house which sprawls over tree-studded lawns. Highcroft in summer, green, majestic. Fresh flowers from Highcroft's gardens are in every room. Softball games, iced coffee, corn on the cob, lounging on the great porch, swimming in the icy fresh water of the plunge, and drying off with big fluffy towels. A special tree where a well-placed pebble makes chewing gum fall to the ground. The 4th of July, cherry bombs, torpedoes, cap guns, and a fireworks display that draws oohs and ahs from grown-ups and little ones alike. Christmas at Highcroft. Everyone comes home. Real lead tinsel shines on Christmas trees in nearly every room. Gathering in the main hall for the annual production of Why the Chimes Rang. Giggling children dressed as choir boys wait on the stairway. Guests sing God Rest Ye Merry Gentlemen as workers haul in the gigantic Yule log on Christmas Eve. A huge supper is served. Family and friends from town toast Christmas cheer. Santa appears down the chimney to distribute gifts. Frank H. Peavy and his wife Mary built Highcroft in 1895. A self-made man with only a grade school education, he founded the Peavy Company in 1874 and built it into one of the world's largest grain companies. In his lifetime, Frank H. Peavy achieved his goal to become a force in the mainstream of American business. His daughter, Lucia Peavy, married Frank T. Heffelfinger in the Great Hall at Highcroft in the fall of 1895. Their four children, Peavy, Totten, George, and Mary, played, studied, and grew up at Highcroft. Mary Heffelfinger Morrison remembers the years growing up at Highcroft as very happy ones. Peavy, Totten, and George were like any other boys, adventuresome, quarrelsome, and physical. Each had a special place in his heart for their young sister. Totten was Mary's protector who sat by the bed and read her stories when she was ill. George and Mary were best friends and playmates. When they were teenagers, George often escorted Mary to parties. George always whistled the same tune as he crossed the lawn from the garage as a signal to mother and father that they had arrived home safely. It was older brother Peavy who taught Mary to fish. During a family trip to Yosemite, Mary surprised everyone. Bored with fishing, she stayed behind while the rest of the family went to fish at another place on the lake. With nothing else to do, Mary dropped a line into the water from the second-story balcony of the hotel. As she struggled with her big catch, the hotel chef gaffed the fish and helped pull it in. Mary was the only family member to catch anything that day. In 1908, Frank T. Heffelfinger took his family to live in the south of France near Monte Carlo. He wanted his children to learn a foreign language and experience life in another country. Aunt Nell, Frank Heffelfinger's sister, and an avid horsewoman came to visit in Paris. For the occasion, she had her portrait taken with her favorite niece Mary and the family dog Guido. Frank T. Heffelfinger's regard for family ties was sacred. Sunday dinners at Highcroft were an institution and will long be remembered by the family members who were there. Softball and other games were part of the Sunday afternoon ritual. Granddad always insisted on pitching. Each new arrival among the grandchildren and great-grandchildren was a special event for Granddad. He went to the hospital to pay a call on each new baby and often demanded to see the little one in person instead of through the nursery window. Grandmother Lucia was a quiet but dominant force behind the scenes at Highcroft. 
Grand was very active in the lives of her children and grandchildren, even though she was bedridden from middle age on. After every social event, Grand's children and their guests would sit on her bed and tell her who danced with whom, what everyone was wearing, and what food was served. Grandchildren were greeted with a hug and the request to recite the 23rd Psalm from the Bible or to list the United States presidents from George Washington to Franklin Roosevelt. Grand's generosity to family and friends was well known. People in town with illness or financial problems were always sent gifts or baskets of food, which Grand often delivered in person. When Grand died, the shops in Wyzetta closed during her funeral service. The annual Christmas pageant was Grand's pet project. Staged like a real theatrical production involving family and neighbors, it was famous in the area. Under Grand's supervision, every room in Highcroft was decorated for the event. Highcroft was a very special place to live, and sadly, a place to leave. The family spent winters in California visiting Christopher Heffelfinger, their grandfather, while the boys attended Thatcher School in Ojai, California. Thatcher was a perfect place to learn, as well as run track, play baseball, and ride horses. The sons of Frank T. Heffelfinger also left to go to war. In the tradition of their ancestors, Philip Heffelfinger, who fought in the Revolutionary War, Major Christopher Heffelfinger, who fought in the Battle of Gettysburg in the Civil War, Peavy and Totten left to fight in World War I. Totten enlisted in the Navy. Peavy was in the infantry. After the war, it was time to come home. Renew family ties. Get married. It was a time to travel and explore the world. Prohibition was in full swing, and there were still parties and family gatherings at Highcroft. The world was changing, and still another generation of Heffelfingers went off to war. In the family tradition, the Heffelfinger men and women served their country in World War II. Totten was the first to enlist. He was a lieutenant in the Navy. Peavy served his country as district director of the War Production Board. George joined the Navy, and his wife Ruth was a Red Cross nurse's aide in Minneapolis. Mary was married to Colonel Henry T. Morrison in Fort Worth, Texas, and also served her country as a nurse's aide. The grandsons served along with their fathers in the Navy and Army. Miraculously, they all came home. Another generation of Heffelfingers married. Had children.
and explore the world. We have inherited our legacy from Lucia PV and Frank T. Heffelfinger. We honor them with our reunion, our family unit. Our lives reflect the pattern of those before us. And we are the family's Heffelfinger, Ewing. And Morrison. Good night, Gran and Granddad. Sleep well, and know your children and their children will never forget you. <laughs>